The history we have been taught in our textbooks about the end of World War II and Hitler's death may all be one gigantic lie. Now, evidence has been brought forth demonstrating a very different narrative than the ones painted in history class. But are you willing to revisit history that has been pushed into our minds for so long? Did Hitler really take his own life at the end of World War II? And did high-ranking Nazis such as Joseph Mengele really get persecuted at Nuremberg? Or make a successful escape to Argentina and Chile instead? Find out on today's episode of Consciously Nikki. Welcome back everybody to the Consciously Nikki Network, a matrix of knowledge and enlightenment. Thank you for joining me for another episode today. If you haven't subscribed or watched my previous videos, please do, I would appreciate it greatly. I also have a Patreon now if you would like to support me a little bit more, linked down below along with all my other social media links. Let's get right into today's episode. The information for today's episode is coming from Tim Kennedy. He is a ranger, a sniper, special force operator, and a former UFC fighter. He has a show called Hunting Hitler in which he tries to find out what really happened to Hitler after the war and all the Nazis where did they end up going? He was featured on Joe Rogan as well. You may have seen him before, but today we're really gonna dive into his information. A few episodes ago, I had a look at Operation Paperclip in which I did relate to you all what happened to the Nazis after World War II. As you know, a lot of them did go to America to work on special programs such as NASA as a way of ensuring that the communists did not get them. But today what we're gonna do is look at the ones that didn't go to America and where they ended up and why they were so successful where they went. Let's dive into the conspiracy theories of Hitler and if he killed himself after World War II. There is a lot of evidence proving that Hitler possibly allegedly did not take his life at the end of World War II. According to Tim Kennedy's research, British and Americans have actually been declassifying documents associated with Hitler's death. There were actually many FBI documents that the Americans were spending millions and millions of dollars upon trying to acquire. All these documents basically specified if Hitler killed himself after the war or didn't. President Hoover at the time even stated to the FBI to send in more agents to South America, to Africa, to parts of Europe to see where the hell Hitler went. And this is all documentation. So if he did supposedly kill himself, why would all this work be extensively done to to see where he went. There are even first eye accounts according to some of these documents that state that Hitler ran away after World War II. If you don't know the official story of Hitler's death, the story goes that Hitler killed himself in a bunker with Eva Braun. Allies were approaching and he knew he had nowhere to go. However, this seems to be very misleading. Tim Kennedy stated that the Russians were the ones that got the skull in the body of Hitler. They brought it back to Moscow. They let one genetic test occur and the the body with the bullet hole and the one that everybody said is Hitler actually returned as the body of a 35 year old woman. Which really throws off the narrative that this is Hitler's body, it was taken, he died, blah, 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 blah. If we go back in history a little bit and examine 1945 April, where the Allies were coming into Berlin, Tim Kennedy states that it was so chaotic. There was two fronts coming in into Berlin at the time. War was happening. There were no proper chemists and scientists there to examine the body or forensics for that matter. We really don't know the official narrative of what happened. There's also no absolute proof of where Hitler went. According to Tim Kennedy, though, if he had to take a guess, he believes that Hitler made his way to South America and stayed there. The other option is that maybe Russians just grabbed the wrong body and they actually took Eva Braun's body instead of Hitler's. But Tim Kennedy did try to get a hold of Eva Braun's family to conduct the proper research and get the DNA samples, but they would not consent to it at all and wanted nothing to do with the story. They just want it to be done with forever. What Tim Kennedy did confirm though is things that I've been saying in my past videos, which is that America, South America, very 
various places in the world, including Soviet Union at the time, were desperate for Nazi chemists, scientists, and engineers after World War II. There was an increasing demand and fight to acquire these individuals because of the fact that they knew and were so advanced with technology. And again, this was to ensure that communism did not spread. And just a side note I'd like to add to kind of emphasize how much I can't stand, Tim Kennedy can't stand, many other individuals of high academia cannot stand Warner von Braun. When he was running the rocket program in Germany for America, he would, and this is just a little graphic I would like to give a warning before I proceed, he would hang the five slowest Jewish individuals as a way of showing everybody this is what will happen if you work slow. This was after World War II. He was still doing this crap. Apologists who say, oh, but he helped us get to the moon. Garbage, garbage, he's a bad, bad, bad man. I love how Tim Kennedy also mentions that, so suddenly the war ends and these individuals are not Nazis anymore. It doesn't work that way. And wherever these Nazis went, the ideologies followed them. And I'm going to give you proof of that. This also gives us more proof that it's very legit and possible that Hitler went with some of these Nazis to possibly South America. According to Kennedy and through his research and various other professors, many Nazis ended up going to South America after World War II, specifically Argentina and Chile. If you think about it, back to back, Argentina did have fascist regimes controlling it. For example, Perón, who was the president of Argentina during the Cold War, actually a part of the Nazi party in the early 30s, he happily allowed all these Nazis into Argentina after World War II. He had this sense of camaraderie for them. Not only that, he wanted Argentina to have a chance to acquire some of that incredible German technology which was going around at the time. Apparently, tens of thousands of high-ranking Nazis made their way into South America. So if you think about it, between those that went to America to work on Operation Paperclip and then the tens of thousands that came into South America, who was left at Nuremberg to try and to give punishments to? It seems that they all got away. In our history textbooks, we're taught that most of them were tried at Nuremberg and justice was served. I don't think that's the case at all. Some of these high-ranking Nazis that made their way to South America included terrible, disgusting individuals such as Joseph Mengele and Adolf Eichmann. To put into context how bad these individuals were, again, I just want to provide a little bit of a warning about what I'm going to say. Mengele was the man who would actually take syringes full of blue ink and inject them into people's eyes to see if he could change the color. He would also use twins and torture one of them to see if the other would feel any sort of pain. He also set up Colonial Dignidad, which we're going to get into now. This was a torture camp started by himself and Joseph Schaefer, another high-ranking Nazi. But Mengele was the doctor or the one that controlled the hospital, aka the angel of death. This hospital in Colonial Dignidad was in Chile. There are various communities within Argentina and Chile that only speak German. If you were to go to Colonia Dignidad today, which is now called Via Bavaria, it's exclusively German. And all the people that live there are descendants of high-ranking Nazi officials. According to Kennedy, the second generation of these Nazis are even more fanatical than their grandparents. Actually, it's so bad that some of these individuals moved to America and ended up going to jail for acts of white supremacy and racial discrimination. Some of the grandchildren, he stated, would come out with these boxes and they would wear white gloves presenting it to Kennedy, but he wasn't allowed to touch it. Within these boxes would be either some souvenirs, badges, things that would commemorate their Nazi grandfather. And when Kennedy stated like, hey, you do know your grandfather was a bad man and he was a Nazi, they acted so proud like, oh yes, we know, we know, as if it was something good that their grandfather did. This is still happening today. I want to leave you all off with a story that Kennedy shared about a man and a woman from Chile and their experience at Colonia Dignidad. It is really, really upsetting. So again, just a warning before you go into this next part of my video. The lady from the story grew up in Colonia Dignidad dad. She herself was a German. Her future husband was a poor Chilean boy and I'll explain how they come together after. So he ended up hearing about this new hospital that was being built in Colonia Dignidad and at the time it had the reputation of being a safe haven. For those who were poor they could come over and get food and a place to sleep. 
all the poor locals would fall for this propaganda that it was a safe haven. So this young man ends up going there thinking, wow, I'm lucking out. But what happens to him in the next years of his life are horrific and so graphic. The torture that Mengele was doing on Jewish people in Germany he was continuing to do in Colonia Dignidad, but just on a new group of people. And in this case, it was the Chileans that he was working on. However, he finally talks to his future wife, which is that woman that lived in Colonia Dignidad as well, and they were able to make an escape together. One of his friends who he grew up with was a police officer nearby, and he ends up getting a message out to him explaining what was really going on here and that they needed help. So these police officers dressed up as health inspectors and came in and raided the place to see what was going on and then he was able to allow the two of them to escape with him tim kennedy was explaining that when he was talking to this man he was shaking he was so mad but the man said to him no more hate should be happening and that only love should be spread and that suffering should be finished with that's an incredible human being to feel that much compassion to people that hurt him the whole idea here that tim kennedy presents is oh, what can be done now right you have these individuals who are the descendants of Nazis. And many of these Nazis never ever faced one sentence or consequence. A lot of them dying of old age on beaches, for example. What justice can be served and how can we ensure that these ideologies die? That's it right there. We have to make sure these ideologies die and that fascism as, it's, as a whole does not spread throughout these communities, even though it's already starting to. What's more perplexing is the fact that this is still happening today and that these pockets of South American communities are full of Nazi descendants. So again, it's very interesting to see that in 2020, we're still dealing with issues from 1945 that were never initially taken care of. The history that we've been presented is actually quite false. That is all for today's episode. I encourage you to research more. Please subscribe, like this video, and share. I am so excited to be rolling out my Patreon for all of you, so go check that out as well. My Instagram is down below, and I will see you all next week, same time as usual. Stay curious.